Hello, I'm Sharon LaShore Roy with the Florida Blue Social Media Team. We are here at the 2017 Community Health Symposium and Sapphire Awards, and we're having a Sapphire Conversation with Mark Thomas. So Mark, welcome to a Sapphire Conversation. Thank you, it's good to be here. So, interesting panel you had. Um, and this year's theme is about creating a culture of health. Mm. How do you think that theme is appropriate this year? Well, in the United States, and I assume in Florida as well, we're on this big journey of uh, a critically necessary healthcare reform, payment reform. Uh, everybody's familiar with the big numbers, but the United States pays about twice as much as our, our uh, closest uh, neighbor amongst developed countries, and we get pretty poor outcomes for the money. So uh, we've, got to, we've got to make changes, and we know there's also this a large number of uh, older Americans that are about to enter the system, and if we, if we don't have some pretty serious uh, redesign, uh, th we're going to break the system. So you talk about breaking the system. So when we say creating a culture of health, how do we turn that negative of breaking a system into a positive, mm -hmm. into creating a not more than a culture of health, but a, a system of wellness and right. even preventative care? Right. Well, the good news is uh, there's a lot we can draw from, from examples in the United States uh, and examples in other developed countries. We know what works. And what's gone largely, uh, or, or uh, what hasn't been attended to as well in the United States is attention to what's called the social determinants of health. Mm -hmm. All those factors about where we live and learn and work and play that are, in a sense, upstream of, of health care. By the time we get so sick that we need to be hospitalized, the horse is already out of the barn. Yes. And there's, there's so much more that, that could have been done uh, to, to address those needs, to encourage healthy mm -hmm. behaviors, to, uh, to make the healthy choice the easy choice for people in their, in their daily lives. Okay. Now, as a hospital um, administrator, I can say that because I know that's what you are. Um, how can you help or your organization help build a healthy community? Hospitals, and I would say in particular nonprofit hospitals, have a, a great opportunity immediately in terms of what we call community benefit. These mm -hmm. are the dollars that we're really accountable for demonstrating okay. to our communities that, that we are um, investing to, to improve health. So traditionally, we report that in terms of charity care or the unfunded portion of Medicaid. But increasingly, I think there is attention to those truly proactive investments with our community partners in the social service sectors and other mm -hmm. places. But there's another even bigger opportunity, which has to do with payment reform. Okay. As hospitals start to be uh, paid for really achieving the outcomes of health, it really shifts what we might want to fund uh, and where we might want to fund mm -hmm. it. We start looking at partnerships uh, with school districts and with uh, social service partners, housing authorities in totally different ways because the data today tells us that those factors can actually improve health as much or more than health care alone. What's intriguing then with the Florida Blue Foundation attendees who are a lot of community orga uh, organizations and influencers, that's a great story to, for them to hear and yeah. how you know, hospital systems are looking to partner with um, them. You know, do you think that that will help move the needle? I hope so. I, I hope a message that is getting stronger and stronger in our country is uh, that this work is not, it's not just a matter of charity or justice, which is, uh, which are already, mm -hmm. you know, very worthy in and of themselves, but it actually makes business sense. There, there's a, uh, there's a way that, that this all pencils and in fact is quite strategic as we can anticipate the, the movement from, sometimes we say, from volume to value. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, final question on a personal level, yeah. how and why could you help build a healthy community? I think uh, one of the things I'm most committed to because it's, it's most personally meaningful and, and rewarding to me is finding ways to include the voices of everybody in the community, but especially the people who, um, you know, from, a, from an insurance perspective, we might say are the highest risk okay. people. But what we really mean by that, uh, from, if I speak to it from my theological background, um, those who are living at the margins, mm -hmm. those who the prophets might have called the, the orphan, the alien, the widow, the outsider, the stranger. How do we make sure we, we reach out to those people uh, to give them every opportunity to, 
to thrive and to live fully human, dignified lives. Um, I think there's an inherent value in that. It just so happens that we're on this journey where the payment models for healthcare are actually, we have the potential for those things to line up. Oh, that's great news. And um, as a person of faith, it's great to hear that even from you. So um, thank you so much, Mark, for joining this Sapphire Conversation. It was a pleasure speaking with you and um, just a pleasure in general for your panel and the, the words that and the insight that you gave our attendees. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you.